Good evening. Welcome to another d edition of uh, the Tom Murphy Show. Uh, tonight, we're very pleased to have as our guest the supervisor of the town of Mamaroneck, Nancy Selickson. Nancy, thanks for joining me here tonight. My pleasure, Tom. Thanks. Now, Nancy, you're, you're how long have you been supervising now? A year and a half? Or is it? One year and one month. One year and one month. And how, how are you enjoying it? I really do enjoy it. Yeah. Um, I had been on the town board for 12 years before that as a council woman on the board. Uh, but being supervisor is much different than just being a councilwoman. It's, it's a much bigger job than I really anticipated. Yeah. But it's very interesting. There's so many different facets to it, so much variety. Uh, it's never the same thing on any given two days. And it's never boring. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you're blessed to have a good board and uh, you know, good staff with uh, Steve Altieri and it's Christina Natalia. There's a nice crew that works there in yeah. the town. But, you know, there's a lot of issues facing the town of Mamaroneck right now. And the, the most important and the most that's going to be impactive to uh, all of us that own a home in the community is the issue of reval. Yes. And just briefly, you know, let's just explain what reval is. Sure. Um, reval stands for reassessment or revaluation. And um, the assessment is the way that we measure what a house is worth in our community. And taxes are based on the assessment of uh, uh, the house. New York state law demands that we collect taxes based on the value of someone's home for schools, county, and the local municipality. We last valued the homes in our community in 1968. Wow. That was a long time ago. Yeah. Values have changed dramatically. The environment has changed dramatically. The country, the whole world, of course, has changed dramatically. And also under New York state law, the town board is uh, required to fairly tax the people of the community. And when you're really working with a uh, assessment that was done in 1968, you can't really defend it that easily because there's so many changes. Yeah. So we have lots of people who come to the town and file a small claims or certiorari against the town saying that their taxes are the wrong amount, that they're paying too much. And we often have to settle those um, uh, claims because it's very hard to defend the assessment role we currently have. So for many years we talked about in the town trying to do a reassessment and bringing it up to market rate a hundred percent which would make it much more comprehensible to everyone and much more fair because right now we know there's some people who are probably paying more than they should, some people who are probably paying less, mm -hmm. and some who are probably paying the right amount. But if we do a reassessment we figured we would have a fair and equal way of assessing the taxes. So, and that's really the whole basis behind it. Right. So just so to, to uh, kind of clarify, it's not at all about raising any by taxes. Oh, it's no. just shifting the burden. So that it's, so it's fair. More equitable. Exactly. Fair and equitable. Because when, when folks do a certiorari and they get their taxes lower, what happens is it shifts the burden to everybody else. That's and, right. and it's just a constant game of uh, right. Ponzi almost. And in our community, we pay out as a collective community, meaning the school district and the two mu three municipalities, millions of dollars a year because there are so many certiorari. So if someone files a claim in the village of Mamaroneck, but it happens to be also in the town of Mamaroneck, uh -huh. the town is usually the lead agent in, in conducting that certiorari. But the village has to pay a certain amount, and the school district pays even more. Right. And so we see those on a regular basis, and it's very painful to, to have to pay those out. And the town is the entity that collects the village. The town, the town is the entity that collects the school taxes yes. and distributes it to the districts. Yeah. So the town collects the county and school taxes, right. and we have to guarantee those taxes. So whether we collect 100% or not, we have to guarantee and pay out 100% of them. Well, so if somebody's short, you have to come up with the... Yes. Yeah. Uh, cash flow. So um, we're going forward with it. We decided to do it about a year ago, uh, maybe a year and a half ago. And um, we've hired a contractor named Gar Associates. Mm -hmm. They've gone out, they've collected data. That means they've literally gone out and asked to go inside every single one of the 5,800 parcels in our community. Both in the town of Mamaroneck, the village of Lodgement, and the village of Mamaroneck portion? Exactly. Every parcel that is within the town of Mamaroneck, including the two villages, commercial properties and residential mm -hmm. properties. If people let us inside, we got a very clear view of what w the um, 
the, what the area was like or what the, the property was like. And if they weren't allow, uh, letting the folks inside, they were able to go around the outside and uh, with very sophisticated photography and understanding of the community and what they were looking at, they were able to make an educated guess as to what the assessment should be. Okay. So that whole process happened this past year. And in the beginning of the year, we held seminars and uh, meetings for the public to let them know what was going on, how it was going to happen, and what we were going to do. Um, I think that was really helpful to people. I gave a lot of talks at different uh, to different groups, homeowner groups, real estate groups, and we actually had seminars held in the town of Mamaroneck. We also um, encouraged people to call GAR Associates if they had questions or concerns. Now the next stage is about to come up very soon and that's going to be in the beginning of March when the disclosure statements go out. So every homeowner is going to get what GAR thinks that their house is worth? Yes. And it will be, um, it will show you what you paid in taxes in 2011 because we know what you paid in taxes okay. in 2011. And it will show you what your taxes would have been in 2011 if we had done reassessment, if it had already been accomplished. So you will see the difference. And it will be based on what your home is worth in relationship to all the homes in, in the community, because that's really what it is. The town doesn't get to collect any more taxes through this process. Right. We simply are collecting them more equitably. Now, I, I, I think I vaguely remember that there's an opportunity at this juncture when you, when you do the new tax roll to kind of bifurcate it, to have a commercial tax roll and a residential tax roll? That's true. Are you guys going to make that? You, you haven't, you not have the ability to make the determination yet, or are you? We are going to have to make that decision in the next month or so, and it's called the homestead provision. And that does separate out the commercial um, in a different way, and that would include condominiums. So that's something that's of great interest to everyone uh, in the community. We actually met with the school district finance board, uh, the school board's finance committee, uh, to talk with them about it. And on Monday, we have a meeting with the board in the village of Larchmont and the board in the village of Mamaroneck. We also, we're going to go there and talk to them about this homestead provision, and we have um, uh, John Wallum coming from the state. He is of the from the Division of Taxes or Office of Real Property right, Taxes. Right. And he's going to help us explain it because the villages and the school district have decisions to make in regard to homestead as well. Because you know, when I was on the board, uh, it became obvious that you know, condominiums, while a condominium that's worth half a million dollars and a house that's worth half a million dollars, condominiums usually paying a lot less in taxes that's right. than the houses that's worth a half a million dollars because they view it as potential income instead of the, the, the actual worth of the house. Right. The taxes are based on the rental income of a condo property rather than on the fee value of it. Right. Um, so it's a very, it would be a, could be a very big change. Yes. But I mean, we have not decided yet. Well, you know what I would I, what I always seem to, appeal, I, mean, I, I haven't studied the issue obviously at, at length that uh, you folks will, but it would always seemed appealing to me was that you know, most of your big hits uh, on search areas were from commercial properties. Yes. And this way, the burden would then just be shifted to other commercial properties and not to the homeowner. So that, that might, you know, because we I know when I was on the board, you know, I, I don't know how the real estate market is now, but commercial properties were killing us. Yeah, yeah. those are the big certiaries that we see. Um, but we think that we've done a, a, had a really good job done by the contractor, GAR Associates. And that's so important. Huh? It, it is yeah. important because it has to be an accurate process yes. for it to really be a fair and equitable process. So at the time the disclosure statements come out, again, GAR Associates will be available to people. Mm -hmm. You'll be able to call them. You'll be able to make an appointment with them, come visit them and see them if you want to at the town center. Um, we will have lots of support to uh, help people understand the process and to explain how they came to those numbers. Now, I know in the town of Rye when I did it, uh, you know, there was a lot of, uh, I, I don't think they did as thorough a job picking their consultant, and there was a lot of, you know, uh, emotions and uh, drama at the end over what their people's houses were valued. But I, I think a lot of that turned out to be kind of just, you know, the shock of, listen, you know, that third of the population whose taxes are going up, 
you're never going to make them happy. No. You know, no matter how they look at it, you did a rotten job, and, and, and this, this, this didn't work out, and you don't understand, and you know, it, my, the bathroom doesn't work, and he didn't take that into account. It's but, true. I know. In fact, Steve Altieri and, and I— if my taxes go up, you're going to hear Yes, I'm sure. Thing. Everyone will be. <laughs> yeah. um, I am thinking of leaving the country for a few <laughs> weeks in the beginning of March. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> but yeah, it, it, I, I, from someone who has sat on a board and made those decisions, I think it's a very brave thing that you guys did. You know, and it was long overdue. And after the town of Mamaroneck does it, it'll, it'll, it'll enable it. The village of Mamaroneck has its own tax roll that mm -hmm. we maintain. So after the town of Mamaroneck does their reval and the town of Rye has done its reval, we can just get rid of our tax roll. And, Definitely and, can. And it'll be a savings to the village of Mamaroneck. Yes, it would in, be. In the uh, long run. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you, it, it'll, it'll end up as a, a, a net positive, I believe. I think it will also. I think it will be, um, and I do think it'll be much more fair and equitable for everyone. I mean, those people whose taxes will go up have been um, having a benefit yes. that they really shouldn't have had for exactly. a long it, time. You can't tell them that. but we, right. you, That's the honest to God truth, though. You're right. You're exactly right. And, and, and you know, there's a lot of other municipalities that are now take, looking at it very seriously. Yonkers is looking at it seriously. Scarsdale is beginning to do it. Um, so I think that it's becoming more and more um, accepted and, and recognized that this is really the fair and equitable way to go. It would have been great if the county would have done it. Yes. That, that would have, it would have been cheaper for everybody in the long run, and it would have been more equitable when deciding, you know, what portion of community gets their county tax raised. But, you know. We you, couldn't wait for you that. Could, no, you couldn't <laughs> wait. You, you'll be waiting until, uh, you know, we, we're, our grandchildren will be here. Um, you know, I know the town is uh, very environmentally aware and astute. You know, you and... Uh, uh, Phyllis have always been worked hard on the environment. You know, could you just talk to me about some of the initiatives that the town has gone through uh, environmentally was? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Um, we have created an environmental committee. It's called the Sustainability Collaborative. And we're really lucky to have individuals from all three of the municipalities participating who are actually experts in their field and do it as a, for a living, but are volunteering their time to take a look at some of the issues in the town. Uh, the number one thing they're looking at and we're working on is reducing our energy use. Because if we can reduce our energy use, we can save money and we can reduce our carbon footprint. The in first, town government? Yes, yes in okay. the government sector. Okay. Now, I would love to see it uh, spread to the residential sector as well. And that's a whole, that's sort of the next step. Uh -huh. But right now we're looking at the ice rink and the town center. Well, the ice rink must be a huge uh, power draw, right? The ice rink is the largest energy user in the town. Yeah. Making ice takes a ton of energy, mm -hmm. more than a ton of energy. The ice rink is now 23 years old, and actually its systems are starting to fail and fall apart. So we have to renovate it if we're going to keep it. And it gives us the opportunity to renovate it in as green a fashion as possible, right. meaning that things that we replace will be much more energy efficient than the current uh, machinery. But also, we're looking at taking the energy that's created by making ice, which creates heat, heat right. and using that heat in other parts of the building so that we don't have to run heat in other parts of oh, the building. Oh, that's a great idea. We're also looking at um, capturing this snow melt that's picked up from the Zamboni and using that to re-ice the ice. Wow. Um, so there's lots of circular and... and um, uh, systems within that we're looking at to really make it much, much more energy efficient. And the ice rink is such a great amenity. You know, it is. You, you, you know, you've had young children in the community, and it's just it's a nice place for the kids to go yeah. on a Friday night. Or you know, just it's so funny to me. I've had a lot of people come up to me and say that they've moved to the community because of the ice rink. Now, well, I they might have been from Canada, <laughs> 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 but they um, they. People really, really value it and treasure it. And in fact, we're known throughout the region because of the ice rink. You know, people who even live in the city end up using our ice rink for different um, events. Especially for hockey events. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It, yeah. It, it, it's, it really is nice. Between that and the pool, you know, it, it, it really gives you, uh, especially when your family's young, a place to go yeah. and that's affordable. 